advocacy for Saibaba has been so far by various international actors and kind of arrive at some sort of conclusion about why there hasn't been that much. Um, so for starters, India doesn't have any laws or, um, or anything in the constitution to define torture. Um, there is no mention of torture in the Indian constitution. Um, and it's something that, in, that the high courts of India are working towards currently, but given that it is the 21st century, it, it seems ridiculous to think that um, such a developing economy in such a, a large country doesn't have any mention of torture, even though they are a signatory member of the UN Convention on Torture, um, if, and, but they're not a ratified member. Um, which is one of the things that um, we thought was very interesting considering that they are a signatory member, but none of the other signif uh, signatory or ratified members of um, this convention of torture um, have put any pressure on India um, in order to release Sai Baba, but because according to the convention on torture um, and how they define torture, um, what's, what Sai Baba is going through with his disabilities, with his 19 different ailments, with his post-polio syndrome, um, his condition in the Anda cell in, the, in solitary confinement is defined as torture under the UN Convention. Um, so uh, we, we kind of tried to think of why Canada hasn't done much in terms of advocating, considering Canada is such a big advocate for human rights globally. Um, and Ali kind of found out that um, India is Canada's eighth trading partner in the world. Um, we've seen um, Christia Freeland tweet about the Saudi Arabia case, and um, we've seen other uh, Canadian diplomats talk about various human rights issues and human rights abuses, but um, one of this magnitude has been completely ignored. Um, and we've kind of found reason that it's because India is such a big trading partner um, with Canada. Um, whereas Saudi Arabia is only 28th on the list of overall trading partners with Canada. And so um, it kind of comes down to maybe they don't want to sacrifice trade relations and economic relations for this one cause. Um, another reason we thought that there might be less advocacy is because Sai Baba has been tried under the Unlawful Prevention Act as being accused of being of his communist or Nick select ties. Um, we felt that this was a, a big um, reason why a lot of Western powers, um, such as Canada and the US, haven't been involved in this case as much because um, they feel it's not their place to question the, UN, the, the Indian government's accusations. And since, they, and since Sai Baba has been accused of being a communist, they want to stay away from this case. Um, and so, as of now, there are still a, a lot of actors who are advocating on Sai Baba's behalf, but they are either individuals or international organizations, not um, necessarily any states. Um, in fact, no states have taken up this cause. Um, and so there are individuals like Gurpreet Singh, like Scholars at Risk. Um, so for example, scholar, um, out of his solitary confinement, um, Sai Baba has been writing a number of poems about his condition, about his imprisonment, and so on. And so Scholars at Risk is planning on releasing a book of his poems to kind of raise a, more awareness about him and honor his cause. Um, furthermore, um, there are associations like the Free Sai Baba Coalition in the US, which are also advocating on, behalf, on his behalf, but it remains confined to um, organizations and individual people rather than um, actual states advocating on his behalf. 